Right now on Full Custom Garage, master metal man Ian Roussel tries to create a dream project for a special client. Jack and I have been friends for going on 15 years. He's worked with a lot of the greats. I've seen him build a lot of custom stuff, and this truck's just been sitting around. I've been wanting to build this thing ever since the 60s. I brought it to Ian because I know he's the only guy that can do this stuff. But as the guys get into it, things don't go as planned. <laughs> Where's my head? This is too high. Yeah. You get a little taken aback when you see this. I don't know if Jack's having second thoughts, but he's definitely concerned. I don't know. With the build on the line, Ian needs to get down and make it happen. So you're switching up the whole bill on the back of the truck, too. Of course. <laughs> That's what it's all about, isn't it? Jack's got a lot of crazy ideas, and I like it. Finally getting to work on my friend Jack's pickup truck. The thing that struck me first about this truck was the chop is just on. The proportions are perfect. I love the five window look, the little corner windows in the back of the cab. It takes a lot of work to make all that happen. I think the coolest thing about this truck is the fact that it has a complete drivetrain upgrade. It's a front wheel drive out of a Cadillac. All oh, right, I see the steering. Put, put in the here. back. Basically the whole front clip of a Cadillac in the back of the pickup truck. This van has gone full custom already. I think it's really cool. I'm thinking it really nice interior, cool paint job, lower it, it's on the road. And the cool factor in all of it is that the bodywork's done. I think if we just give this a quick block sand, maybe a yeah, sealer no, and paint, no, no, we're good to go. No, no, we're gonna have to uh, cut it up a little bit. I can't leave anything alone. So we're gonna have to take about this much out of the middle. I want the, the top to be about this high. Jack threw a total curveball at this project. <laughs> I was thinking of wild paint schemes, you know? And he's talking about cutting this thing apart. So you want to section the entire body? Yeah. It's a pretty good looking truck like it is, man. I know. You sure you don't want to just start on another one? <laughs> this is, uh... No, 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 no. This, uh, this has to be the one. It was chopped four inches already, and he liked that. But I had other ideas. I have some drawings here that I kind of scribbled out here. Oh, yeah. He's showing me all these pictures. He's got these different ideas. You know, he's talking shop, and I'm just trying to hang in there. I still can't get over the fact we're going to cut apart this awesome truck. This is even crazier, man. I mean, this is a nice, clean-looking, classic kind of chopped-up pickup, and you want to build a spaceship. Of course. <laughs> That's what it's all about, isn't okay. it? That's of course. pretty freaking radical, man. That's like a full custom body, then. Well, it is. Look but you don't really change anything mechanical into here. No, it's no, all cheap no. metal work. Mechanical work's been done. It, no. it needs a little, it's got a few little bugs in it. I don't mean I'll to like seem a little stuff. nervous, but I am starting to sweat. It's hot out. <laughs> I'm the guy that likes to cut stuff up, likes to freak it out. <laughs> so Jack's kind of turning the tables here. I thought we were going mellow on this, and he's taking it to a whole new level. Here's the original truck. Oh, crazy. It looks like an old truck that's my favorite custom truck, which was the Deora, and I decided I want to build something, not exact, but close. I updated it, made some sketches, what it would look like today if somebody was to build it today as opposed to 50 years ago. I just made a few changes, and then that's what I want. I told him I'd build him a vehicle, so I guess it's his call. Well, and looking at this thing, it's nothing like what you have. I think we got to cut that whole thing apart and just like build a new body. Sure, whatever it takes. I know what this thing's going to turn into, a pile of sheet metal. I have a plan of attack. I just want to be sure that he's all in. There went a fine custom pickup. Well, I just took some pictures of it, so you can look at those later. Perfect. I'm going <laughs> to pin one up on the Something on to the remember. Board. Yeah. <laughs> All the plans have been hashed out. I have an idea of what Jack wants to accomplish. All we got to do is start cutting. Just take this off, because we're going to get rid of this anyway, correct? Whatever you want, man. I'm, I'm on board with you. Cut it up. Jack's a bundle of energy. <laughs> he's moving around the shop. His hair is bristling. He's ready to go. I dug this truck from the moment I saw it. I was trying to get it off of Jack. He doesn't seem to have any attachment at all. He's treating this like I treat most cars. They're just raw, blank canvases. Cut them up, change them. 
There's a few techy things I want to accomplish with removing this sheet metal, but I know we're sectioning this bed. These are about seven foot long sheet metal panels. They're gonna be way easy to warp if we don't set it up properly. We want to section at five and a half inches because the shock towers are that much lower than the stock bed rails. I think if we cut off the top surface, we'll still have this shelf to weld to so the new panel can come right in and lap just inside the old joint. While Jack's doing the bedsides, I'm going through the nose. I'm gonna to try to remove all the panels independently, take one at a time off of the inner structure because I think that's all we're gonna modify is the inside of the skeleton of this truck. Air conditioned now. It's that blow through design. Keep your, keep your toes cool on those hot <laughs> days. <laughs> Typical day in the shop, sir. Yeah. You know how that it looks goes. looks great, right. I love it. A lot of people get nervous, but. No, no. You got a welder, man. I don't think so. This is getting heavy. Jack doesn't seem to be phased, you know? He's, he's getting into the cutting of this thing and he's all on board. Jack's seen me complete a lot of vehicles. I'm sure he's completely confident. He's just never seen the process. Once we start cutting and he got into it, I, I couldn't keep up with him. He can look at something and see it in his head. I got one piece done, and you got five pieces I'm done. fast, man. I'm I quick. can see that. So I had to hurry up and cut the other panels. I've been wanting to build this thing ever since uh, I saw the car back in the 60s. I thought it was the most beautiful truck I'd ever seen. And I, and I said, one of these days, I'm going to build this thing. You know, it sat around for so long, and I'm thinking, well, maybe this will never happen. But now it's happening. You don't see trucks like this running around on the streets, even today. There's a little bit of a fuss getting these bedsides off. There was a lot of structure in the tailgate area. I helped Jack cut through that with the sawzall. All of a sudden, there's only half a truck. We're at deep. It's a total loss. Call the insurance. <laughs> Jack, how do you feel now that I just cut your whole truck in half? I don't know. You get a little taken aback when you see this after the first four hours. I mean, I've been through it, but I don't know if Jack's having second thoughts, but he's definitely concerned. Yeah. Another fine mess you got me into, Ollie. Yeah, great. <laughs> I told you it could have been easy, but you had to take it this far. I know, I know. Can't listen. You know how that is. Yep. It's uh, too late now. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're down the road, so that's the way it is. At this stage, it's looking like a mess. It's completely cut apart. But I think that's a great starting point. This is a complete blank slate. It's a rolling floor pan. Hey. Hey, look what I got. What the heck you got Couple there? Couple models here. Three-dimensional? I found these in the attic yesterday. Jack came in this morning with actual three-dimensional models, you can tell he's been ruminating on this for a while. He's a passionate man. He's building scale models. He's ready to rock. It's oh, so this good. is the Ford pickup, but this, this is, is a the Ford. Dodge. Sorry That's an point. A100. Right, OK. okay. But this and, is the actual show car. And right, something. and this is, uh, I tried to make this kind of look like So that. this is, in essence, what we're building. Yeah, real close. Yeah, so I think we're right on the money by uh, cutting all the skin off that oh, yeah. we did. Yeah. That was the thing, you know, looking at those photos, I was always looking at this body line, but this model with the, without the body line, it yeah. actually looks well, pretty darn cool. Yeah, that's pretty nice, isn't it? Yeah. This looks tough, man. It's good to see that Jack shares the same passion for this stuff as I do. Because if you saw the scale models and weird stuff that I go through to build my things, it really gives you a feel for the whole vehicle. It's good to know we're on the same page. Well. Put those on the fireplace mantle. We'll keep those for inspiration. Yeah, I'll put the them over build. here. All right, well, I started sanding these. Let me finish this one slice, and All then right. we can mock up these bedsides. We're close. The whole idea with putting these bedsides on is stacking parts. Typical scenario in what I do. Just want to cut this thing down, put one side on, and see if the five and a half inch section was the right call. Let's see how it works out. All we care about is those ends indexing. 
So that's your five and a half. I think that height looks good, man. It's a little more radical than your model. That's and okay. And it's a little less. It's a little in between. Yeah, it's in between the two. I think Jack knew it from the start. I was the one who had to be convinced. So stepping back and looking at it, I think Jack's got an eye for this. I think it was a great call. It really streamlines the whole thing. Yeah. You can see that the van still has some action in it, but the seam we're working by leaving that strength underneath, that's, sure. that's leading oh, it that's, right off. That, that made the, the whole difference right there. Let's put the other side on. Yeah. And just see one, you know, make sure they're make even. Make sure everything's even. It's critical that these bed rails are parallel. If they're crooked, you're gonna see it right away standing back on it. You don't want it to look kind of kind of weird. We're putting a couple straight edges across, measuring down to the floor, standing back and looking at both sides, just basically making sure they're both even and they're ready to weld on. The bed sides were a sigh of relief. But the skeleton in the front now is my big concern. <laughs> the section Jack's talking about is pretty radical. We talked through a number of different ways to section this door. I think ultimately we're gonna have to go straight through the center. A Little more work welding the skin back together, but I think it's gonna afford us the cleanest look. You know what you need in that door? Put a fish tank. LCD TV, a flat screen television. Oh no. It'll look great, <laughs> man. You'll be like all the young guys. Okay, now we flip it over or uh, cut I don't the know. sides? I've never done this before. What do you think? We're, we're kind of winging it a little bit as we go along. If it doesn't feel right, we cut it loose and change it until we both decide that's what we want. Hope your calculations were correct, because otherwise you're going to be looking for a new door. Stack them up. See, when that comes straight down, that'll all fall right into place. And there'll be enough room to get in it. <laughs> I Famous <think>. last words. <laughs> there. I consider Ian would be like Leonardo da Vinci when it comes to cars, because he just whips that stuff out. He looks at it and, okay, we'll do this, this, and this. And it, and it works. <laughs> Look at that. Right on the money. <laughs> Four words to describe it. This is highly technical, Jack. I'm about to get down with my bad self. I'm gonna cut this thing in half, cut that, it's gonna land, it's gonna be perfect. I don't know what else to tell you. Just trying to take baby steps in sectioning this thing. It's way harder to put it back together if you make a bad cut. Voila! But I know in building cars, you kinda gotta have all the pieces in place, and that's really what I'm trying to assemble for Jack. Coming in. Hey, that looks pretty good. You might have to, uh, you know, realign stuff. I'm not sure. Yeah, that on piece or whatever it is, yeah. Holy moly, look at that. See that? That's huh? what those measuring tapes do for you, man. <laughs> I know. Like I said, Jack, if you just pursue this for your career path, you could really, you might even be able to earn a living doing this stuff. You, you've got your natural. <laughs> I've been messing around with this for years goes all the way back to the 60s. 68 when I worked at Barris's, you just work there and you see how stuff was built and uh, you get a feel for it. Jack's pretty laid back about his accomplishments, but he's been in it since before I was born. He's worked with a lot of the greats. You see him in all the magazines, been involved with a lot of projects in the motion picture industry. He's been there and he's done it. He's doing the dance, it's raining, planets are aligning. It's gonna be a good project. Everything's lined up. Look at that. Oh, man. That's that's a radical freaking shop, man. This is going to be great. I was skeptical coming in, but now that we cut your whole truck apart, I'm beginning to see the light. <laughs> now we can clearly see the passenger side line. It's going to look pretty cool. The nose section and the windshield is a critical factor that we need to hash out. As soon as we accomplish this radical sectioning, Starting to look like mini truck style, you know, street truck, super low, pickup. And that inspired me to go with a lowered front end suspension. I got an idea how to pull it off. I just want to see if Jack's on board. So here's what we got. I unbolted everything and I made a couple plates. I don't think we have to take the axle out at all. We can just take both springs off and just flip them. Uh huh. Bolt it all up and then take, weld the plate right let, to the axle. Let it hang on the shocks. Yeah. It's a million ways to go about lowering this truck. I think we're just gonna take the suspension apart, 
put it back together upside down. Okay, dude. Yeah, he's gonna give your head a cleaning. That's what you get for laying on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> One of the hazards of laying down on the floor in this shop is there's somebody at ground level just waiting to attack. I think we're engaged. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, dog. <laughs> it's kind of like a feeding frenzy. You've seen Shark Week. You know how it goes. Once the dog gets the taste, forget it. Okay, dude. Hit the road. Here it is. Cool. Once we got the suspension taken apart, we flipped the leaf springs below the axle. Yeah, I wasn't planning on lowering the vehicle, but uh, Ian insisted on it. So we're going to see how it looks. Way lower. Look at that. Yeah. That's a total <laughs> change of attitude. There it is. It's been said a million times, lower the vehicle, it looks a million times different. It's just way better, in my opinion. I like it. Oh, yeah, she's nice. The next big element is the windshield. Jack's planning on using Lexan, but he's got this other window frame. It's off of a 60 Ford station wagon. 1960? I knew that that's what the other one was, so. The main reason Jack wants to use this is that the original Diora used the same part. And I agree that that's the best way to build a project is around the glass frame. The problem is this window is way too narrow. See, I gotta come you gotta in. gotta come in? I'm a inch and a half in. Yeah, me too. Original vehicle that it was built off of the first one, it was a Dodge. This is a, a Ford. This thing's uh, three and a half inches wider. If it's, if it's too much trouble, why don't we just go with the original? Don't chicken out now. Come well, on. I'm... <laughs> this is going to work. Much... You just need to I'm figure just... it out. Bottom line is Jack really likes the shape of this, and I think I can make it work. If, if it flows properly, that's what you're trying to make it do flow with the rest of the vehicle. And if it doesn't, if it's interrupted or something, then you change it. Just set that and slide it up yeah, in there? Yeah. I think so. Now I'm getting nervous. My idea for the windshield is to use the lower portion of the frame that Jack brought in and made it to the original upper portion of the truck roof. Ian set it in there. We stood back and looked at it, and it looked right. Perfect, straight. It's going to come out better than I thought it was going to come out. Ian used the bottom of the frame that I brought, which I really like. And I think it's going to flow in real good with the headlights that I found. What do you think of this now? Just for the... Where the heck did you get those from? You sneaking parts in behind my back, man. Jack's showing up with something from the local junkyard. <laughs> it could have been on Grandma's Oldsmobile or something. And I don't know. I don't know what he's thinking. <laughs> yeah, I found these. Uh out of an 84 Buick, and they were the thinnest rectangular headlights I could find, so um, I'm just hoping that they work. I felt like we needed to do a quick mock-up of the front end just to see how they'll look. I think Jack's and my process are very similar in that he's just looking for futuristic shapes. I guess in 1960, 1980 was pretty far in the future, so yeah, I guess he's doing that. Maybe a little hidden, more hidden. Let's see if it looks. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's it. Right, just shield the top of it. Like eyebrows. And then he takes the lights and recesses them, like Frenches them in way back. You don't even have any idea that these are mid-'80s or whatever production lenses. They're just sunken in, and it works. So I'm getting the whole look of this nose now. It's all starting to make sense. I just don't understand how you're going to fit in this thing. What's, what's your plan with that? I can barely even get in the door. This won't be in the way. I understand shortening the steering column. This will be over here. What do you mean? We're gonna move this over. You see these sprockets? Right. We're gonna build a thing here with a sprocket here with a chain on it. Jack says he's just gonna move the seat between the fender wells and then reposition the steering. A chain drive, sprocket, steering yeah, offset. Well, yeah, this, this will be the other sprocket over here, and a piece of chain around it. You're looser than me, man. Jack's got a lot of crazy ideas, and I like it. 
the end of each day, Jack takes a bunch of pictures. Uh, he was thinking about this windshield, so he went home, kind of ruminated on it a bit. He went, got his hair cut, got a massage. He's looking good. He's back in action. <laughs> All we changed was the bottom of the windshield. Uh, we brought it up two and a half inches. Other than that, it's a keeper, right? That's it. And we can sh sheet the front of it. Usually, I'm the guy standing back assessing the whole thing. And that's the nice thing about having another professional in the room is he got four eyes instead of two. Still has to come down more, what? just a, a hair. Well, Eighth inch. I don't have any hair. That's good. That's better. A great thing about the way Jack thinks on a project is he's not really wishy-washy about things. He says yes or no very efficiently, and that's really what I'm all about. Make a decision, stick it, and move on. So for the front windshield, Jack brings in a frame with no glass. So for the rear window, he brings in a glass with no frame. The back glass is out of a 58 T-Bird, the square bird, and I think it's gonna fit real good with the back of the roof. It's just gonna be a challenge because the radius does not match what we're building in the rear wall. Just like with the front, it's a different vehicle, <laughs> and he wants to make this work. He's really stuck on this piece of back tempered glass. I definitely need to build a frame for this rear glass, but we need to figure out the angle. That's the most important thing. How about if we lean it a little more? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where's the model? See, this model is... It's going back to the drawing board. Oh, I see, yeah, it is. It's, it's almost symmetrical with the windshield. See the angle? We can, uh, where's your angle finder? It's getting heavy. Jack's getting down with his bad envisioning self. Jack's using the angle finder on the model. I know how to do this real world, and he's getting all with the toy cars. Right? Well, you can use that model all you want, but I would consult the uh, calculations of the pyramids. The model's a good reference point, but we're building a big model here, so let's check out the specs on what we got going on and adjust from there. Why don't you see what the A-pillar is? 55, 55 degrees. Put this at 55, it's gonna look awesome. 50. 55. See, does that look good? Right there. That's fine. The, the whole thing here is proportion, so that's really what all this calibrating and whatnot's about, just trying to make the rear wall angle match the A-pillars. I think it looks perfect. You just start making the surround pieces and uh, weld it in. So we stick the back wall of this thing in position just for a mock-up, and the most important thing is, is somebody going to fit in here? The back wall is gonna inhibit your shoulder room, and let's see what we're working with in real world measurements. Hop on in there, sir. <laughs> that thing's tight. Where's my, where's my head? <laughs> it's too high. <laughs> yeah. I sat on the seat, and my head stuck up about four inches above the roof. No, I've got the solution. We're gonna make a blade right here, oh. and you're gonna sit into position. And we're going to take that much off. Just like I'm uh, it's gonna fit getting perfect. an autopsy. Right. It's going to be perfect. I saw this coming from a mile away. And here we go. Now the challenge of actually getting a human to fit in this vehicle begins. It's going to be fun getting out of this thing, too. I can see that. Now we're going to have to take something out of the seat or cut the floor and drop the seat down into the floor so I can sit a little lower because I don't want to be driving it like this. I think we're going to get Jack to fit in this thing. I got a couple ideas. He's got a couple ideas. It's going to work. Jack's main concern was the angle of this rear window. Once we got that established, the rest was kind of up to me. He had to take off, and I get to get creative. The big challenge in this glass fit up is that it's a different curve and it could go wrong pretty easily. I got a couple ideas to make this work. It's just gonna take a bunch of effort. I'm gonna come down from the glass with a piece of sheet metal and then create sort of a shelf that goes into the bed. The original framework that supported the back of the cab is still intact and I want to attach to that. Well, that's my point of view. I hope he was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I think it's going to be all right. 
The rear of this cab is a major design element in the back view of this vehicle. Jack kind of left it up in the air. We got a lot of loose ends. It's up to me to figure it out. The only way I can describe what these little side panels are gonna look like is similar to what you see in an El Camino. The back glass is kind of recessed in the body and it's got these exaggerated sort of fin shapes that go down into the bed. I don't think this should have a hard 90 degree angle in here. It's gonna look funny. This nice graceful curve is just gonna lick right around and turn into this little fin thinger. I'm leaving this kind of rough. I want Jack to see it. We can refine it to whatever he thinks looks best. I might be on a completely different path than him. I'm out here at the LA Roadster show with Jack. The LA Roadster's Father's Day show is freaking enormous. It's got everything you could ever want. 10 million roadsters, awesome swap meet, and then car show of every type of car out in the parking lot. There's a bunch of things prospectively that we're looking for. He's looking for anything super cool, just open to who knows what, and he definitely needs a fuel tank. You know what else I need for that is uh, <clears throat> I want to get that 50 Ford Speedo, if we can find one. Got a cracked bezel. That should be a discount. Well, I think you should offer him double. I think you should offer him 200. And then Two, see will you says. take 200 for this? But I'm in my shop. I'm feeling it. You know, I'm all, I'm all me. Very comfortable. And you see Jack at the car show. He is definitely in his element. Hey, look at the gas tank. That's just what we need. OK, Fred, what is this, a 20 gallon? Yeah, that's a 20 gallon. I think that's perfect, man. You got fuel injection, too, so it's already got the return line in it. Yeah, that'll work. Cool. I'll stop by Monday and pick it up. Jack and I are walking around just checking out the scene. Hey, look, there's your truck. It's a virgin. It's untouched. And we come across a stock version of his Econoline pickup. I like that trim on the side. Yours didn't have that, or do you think it did? This may be the deluxe model. This is hot. That would have saved us all that body work yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> About five, 10 hours of body work. We wouldn't work. have had to do all that sanding if we oh. had that trim package, yeah, man. Yeah, we just you gotta, bolt, bolted on. You got to research this stuff, man. Yeah, well. You're killing me. I know. Look, so we, we Look just put those. it right over the cuts, and we are done. Why didn't I think of that? I never knew these had this on them. Uh. Seeing Jack's already chopped, I thought it had a great line to begin with. And now the departure from stock <laughs> in the, its radical form is really shown off when you look at it in comparison. I got to tell you, this isn't as good looking as yours, though. No. You're onto something. One of the main reasons we came to this show was to get some inspiration for the paint job. I really wanted to look at a few cars, talk with Jack, and just see what he's thinking. Hey, check out this one. Yeah, the details say nothing uncut, so that kind of- Nothing untouched? Nothing uncut, yeah, they cut every panel. I'm always looking for the really trick fabrication stuff, so seeing some section trucks, just like we're doing, fully sectioned, sliced right through, every panel modified, that's where we're going with this. If I could have one request, no, no third, third brake light, light, please. <laughs> that, that bugs me. Let's go over here to the shade. We're not finding any Dioras. We might as well look at the Roadsters. That's what this is all about. 1914, you remember those days, right? Yeah, barely. I was just a youngster. Now, we haven't really finalized the paint color on your truck, and I wanted to bring you over here and just discuss this car for a minute, because I know you really haven't committed to a final how many color. Beer, how much beer have you drank? <laughs> it looks good with your eyes. Now, this is a pretty unique looking Rear bed, I like it. Oh, yeah. Look so they have a car carrier on the car carrier. All in all, this show is top notch. Everything you wanted was here, except Jack's truck. <laughs> so either you're out of your mind or you're way ahead of the times. One or the I other. I think I'm out of my mind. I'm, I, don't, I, I ain't smart enough to be ahead of the times. Probably a little nuts. Today's the day Jack's coming in to check out my sail panels. Oh, wow. Holy mackerel. I didn't even know he was even getting close to that. But it's beautiful. <laughs> oh, man, this is more than I thought it was going to be. So the big concern I had was this. We can cut these back, but we can't add to them. So, so I just left them big. Well, yeah, well, well we have to so, look at it from right. the side. I left these sail panels on the side of the rear window large for a purpose. I wanted Jack to come in, check them out, trim it to the angle. 
I would think just a couple inches past the back glass. You know, right about here. Cool. We can kind of come to this tack weld maybe. Yeah, about there. That's fine. It was a relief to see that Jack liked the design of the sail panels. After we trimmed them up, Jack was really into it. He came up with another element he wanted to add. You know, I was thinking, what if we put a little... Uh... You could put louvers. No, no, no. I just uh, uh, put a step in it. A big crystal. With the... Uh... Oh. Bead roll it? Bead roll you it. You could do that. It was plain. I figured, you know, if we put a little step in it, we break it up a little bit, and it also give it more strength. Jack comes up with an idea to put a bead roller on it and then create an embossed pattern, and I think that's going to set it off perfectly. I'm impressed. We'll weld that together and uh, go from there. Yeah, I think it's all about having the right crown in the roof skin before we can go any further. Right. This roof skin is definitely not going to be used again. Somebody put a big, ugly, mid-1980s motorized glass sunroof in it, and that sucks. <laughs> I told Jack, I have this roof skin sitting in the back lot. Just might work for what we're doing. So this is the semi-permanent collection. Just, you know, I'm always spinning multiple plates at the same time. Of course. Got your doom buggy, T-Bird, Baja bug. Oh, yeah. but. What do, you, what do you got over here What is with this KFC? Uh, uh, it's my chicken bucket. <laughs> you know, and ask you if you want small, medium, or large. And you and, ordered uh, large. I ordered the large. Extra large. They, and this is what you got. A crane dropped that in the back of the truck. I had to eat the whole thing in one sitting. Oh, boy. It was awesome. It was a great dog. Your dog helped you. Though. Yeah, it was a great time. I don't know what the hell he's going to do with that. With all the stuff I build, I never know what kind of shapes I might need. So I'm always collecting cool stuff. It's like this roof. A guy was cutting a car apart. Mm -hmm. He, he gave taking, you the roof. He had a 58 Chevy. It was all rusted, and they were just taking it apart. But yeah. you see the roof skin is complete. You think this is wide enough? I don't know. That's what I'm we saying. Have a, we Even need a measuring we, device. I think we bring it to the shop. I think this crown. See how crown the bug roof is? Yeah. And then yeah, the T-Bird roof is more like this the Chevy flatter, truck. I think this is right in it's between. like the story of the three bears, right? Yeah. This one's just, just right. Just fine. Just right. Step into the shop and Jack gets busy with the technical stuff. He's measuring, he's thinking, he's considering. 63 it's from gutter to gutter. 55. What's up? That's 63, this is 55. What? Uh -huh. 10 inches difference. My plan was to just nail this roof and it turns out it might be a lot more work than I thought. When we brought it in here and set it down on the floor, I looked at it, and I, the first thing I thought was, this thing's not wide enough. Well, we could just cut the whole skin off and move it around. till it fits, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. We just need this skin for a portion of the roof. We still have a lot of leftover stuff. I'm thinking, let's just cut this off, slap it on top, and just see if we can work with it. The roof is going to be a real challenge. The look of the roof is going to either make or break this truck. So we got to be real careful how it flows. We don't want it to stick up too high, and we don't want it too flat either. We cut the roof skin out of its frame, put it on top of the rig, and we could see it's definitely short. It's, uh, it's going to need a considerable amount of work. What if we turned it sideways? You want to turn it sideways just for grins to see? I knew what side of the roof I wanted to work with, and Jack was picking the other one. So immediately, I had trouble. Even though it was wider, I think the flatter contour is going to be better. You know, I've been telling you from the start, if we turned it sideways, it would fit a lot better. I don't know how many times I have to tell you. <laughs> I was surprised when he put it on, because it did seem like it would fit better on the overall patchwork. But the contour, I think, still needed improvement. This might work. Has to work. It looks pretty good right now, but you know the story of the midnight or the late night girl in the bar who looks pretty good at the first moment's glance. <laughs> Things could change in the morning. <laughs> Jack and I are getting the body work done on some of the car, and I think I got an idea that'll make this roof work. I think the roof skin put on regular ways, not sideways, is gonna work. You think so? 
Well, let me cut this well, back. We'll try it. Because look at this. If we use this, you know, these are original cut lines. They still match up. Right. So if we use you this, cut this portion, in here up to get around the curve and read this over. You're line. reading my mind, man. See, I don't even. I don't have to tell you. The best way to go forward on this is to turn the roof back to its original orientation and then patch in all the sides with the original one from the truck. And then we might have to work the metal around like this to make it fit. I'm not sure yet. We don't know what's going to happen. The whole thing with fitting up this roof was simply to delete the sunroof. So I cut everything away from the original roof that we're going to use that being the four corners, basically, these compound curves, and attaching it to the new skin and just making sure it's all lined up. Just to show you, Chevy and the Ford can get along sometimes. <laughs> in the end, it's a bunch more work than if we put it on sideways. Jack was just trying to help streamline the process, but I think this little bit of extra effort is gonna make the thing look way better. Yeah, so it's a little bit low right here. We'll just have that much filler. That way we can lap on top. It's not bad at all. This is important because if it, this roof doesn't look right, the whole truck isn't going to look right. So we don't want it to look like it's got a crew cut. And we don't want it to look bulbous. So it's got to fit somewhere in between. All right, man, we're ready for the back portion. The trickiest part in the whole roof is the way the rear of it matches up with the rear window and the sail panels. This is a really big design element as well as a structural component. It's right at eye level. Everybody's looking at it, so it's got to count. Is that going to work? No. What? I said we just cut this roof back again. You know? Take some more Take off. Some more, keep going I think you want to come in at least, at least two inches, right? Yeah, at least. Cause that looks pretty parallel. We'll come in two inches and then we'll just come straight up from here. If the back window and the rear of the roof doesn't look right, it just kills the whole project. Our envisioning board. So I think that works like that, eh? Sure. The rear center of the roof is the simple part. I take a piece of sheet metal and put it in the slip roller, set it up to the contour I need, and attach it. It's going to be getting these corners patched in. That's the challenge. So that's cool and all, but I'm just having trouble seeing how all of this is going to come together. And uh, before we go any further, let me just show you one thing I was thinking. I was thinking about how to make this back wall come into the back glass convincingly. Pitch Jack this idea of uh, having kind of a rear overhang, frame it out with some round tube. So this piece here would be out here. Uh huh. Oh yeah. And then you're hiding the, the where the glass sits. It's a total uh, little shroud. First, I didn't think it was a good idea, but then I, when I saw it, I said, "Yeah, it was, it was, it was perfect." Because he saw something I didn't see. I, that's a great idea. Because I, I think it, it gives it a transition here, a point here. I think I won Jack over with my design of the roof and rear wall. He's really stepping back from the, from the harsh design critic, and he went for it. Does that make enough room for the third brake light? When that swoops third out brake light there? possibilities are infinite with this design. <laughs> I got the pep talk completed with Jack. All the pieces are in place. All I got to do is build it. Putting this roof back together was a lot of extra work. If this thing didn't have a sunroof, it would have been a different story entirely. Now, it's all about making the rear of this roof come together. Yeah, I think your idea with the tubes is perfect. I'm glad that Jack liked the idea for the round tubes around because I knew it would tie the whole design together. That's nice. Not only did this round tube in the rear of the roof add the structure that we needed to attach to, by following that all the way around through the drip rails, it shaved them off and just helped the whole thing fit together. Take a look. Tell me what's wrong. Nothing's wrong. What? Just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> Oh, 
I like how, what you did with the window. It's beautiful. I'm feeling pretty good with the rear of the roof, and then Jack shows me these taillights he wants to use. These are freaking massive taillights. What the heck are they out of? I've never seen anything like it. It's a 70 Chrysler. I found him at, uh, at the junkyard. He looked at me, what the hell is this? And I said, well, we're going to try this. We're going to put these two together and see if they fit on the truck. You know, these taillights are quite a bit different than what you had. I thought we were just going to like hole saw and put the other ones back no, in. No, 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 you got to. <laughs> so you're switching up the whole bill on the back of the truck, too, I see. Yeah, well, that's kind of like how I am. This kind of changes everything. <laughs> I don't know where he's going with this, but we're going to have to figure it out. On the next episode of Full Custom Garage, Ian's got even more tricks up his sleeve. When something's this radical, you can't put anything back in its original place. That's the bottom line. With his wheels spinning, Ian goes to see custom car legend, Gene Winfield. I'm dealing with the guy who's got the baddest Econoline pickup on the planet. <laughs> if it takes me three hours or three days or three weeks, doesn't matter. I paint until I like it. I just started. I'm going to keep going until I'm happy with it. You see, the dogs are multiplying, so you know it's the dog days of summer. They're all over the place. Wild animals. They're all out of control. I'm going to shuffle off to Buffalo. Shuffle off to Idaho. See you, dude. Hey, don't forget your dog. I only have enough food for one. Take him with you. Come on. That, not only you, the brown. You. Come on. That's it, buddies. Not you, dude. Uh, now you got two now, man. Now I got to feed both of them. They're coming for a sleepover. <laughs> <laughs>